everyone, uh, welcome back to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are at the lecture number 11 that is uh, basically basic structural properties. So far uh, whatever we have discussed is uh, more or less uh, related to the building um, structure, different architectural style, their synergy. We have also learned about different kind of loads acting on a building. So, uh, there we have seen some static load, dynamic load and also discussed uh, the evaluation of uh, evaluation of structure from uh, like uh, prehistoric age to the modern age and we have seen the transformation. So, in this lecture we will uh, focus on like some basic properties that I am sure that you have uh, come across like uh, in our uh, like uh, 12 standard uh, physics. So, different kind of property related to the force, then stress, strain and then um, we will again actually recap these things which are very essential to know about the structure. So, accordingly we can make uh, the structural element and uh, we can uh, make uh, the structure stable and also having good strength by putting the right material to it and maintaining the overall synergy with the architectural design. So, let us start uh, this particular uh, uh, session with uh, some of the definitions that it is again a recap. So, here we see that uh, basically the property that we discussed about a structure. So, this is uh, coming under the mechanics. So, this is basically the study of structures where uh, like different behavior of uh, you know uh, structural element will be studied based on different loads uh, applied on it. And it has two dimension in a two way we can do it, one uh, basically under statics and other one is dynamics. So, in static basically it will uh, deal with the force system and that we can see uh, to make uh, the static equilibrium. Uh, so, what exactly it is to give the example, I have this uh, slide changer. Okay, now, I am holding it, I am giving a support and it is acting like a cantilever, okay, but still I am holding it that is why it looks very stable. But if I just want to put it in one uh, finger, so I am scared because uh, I do not know the exact position where I can support, but with this two fingers I can hold it. So, now it is in equilibrium, but still it is uh, you know having some sway and when I make it like this on a stable platform. So, it is more stable. So, uh, for a building also uh, due to the gravity load or lateral load like wind load or seismic load. So, then the problem is the building will uh, really try to adjust itself with that external force acting on it and try to maintain a balance and try to create the equilibrium. So, static equilibrium will come to that in the next slide. The other one is basically the dynamics where we study the property of a structure um, in uh, some of the dynamic forces like during the high speed, high wind flow, how building will sway, what will be the deflection on it. So, we will focus on that. So, basically it deals with the motion of a system uh, of material uh, and it is under the influence of forces. The other one is basically the overall uh, statics uh, is uh, the equilibrium we want to say and the other one is the dynamics where we will study the nature of a structure how it will go. Uh, so, with that we proceed uh, uh, further uh, to just uh, this is a brush up of the idea that already we know like force and moment. So, force is basically an action on a body and what will be the result into that. So, it may change the shape of an object, it may move an object or change the motion of an object. So, how exactly it is? Let us take uh, one example, the first one the change of the shape of an object. So, here I have a, like a thermocol, a piece of thermocol. Now, this is uh, like in a free state now and I want to put a force. So, you can see that how it is going to change the shape. So, if I put it uh, like in a column position, so you can see the size of the thermocol 
is getting reduced and sometimes if it is not really equal and opposite direction, so it will also give a bend. So, it may be a permanent deformation okay, or it may be uh, retained back to its original position based on the elasticity. Now, we use the rubber band for the different purposes. So, sometimes you know we just elongate it and then when we release the uh, force, so it will get back the original shape, but sometimes with repetitive use and we will get some permanent uh, deformation. So, it can change the shape of an object, move an object, definitely it can move. So, uh, if no force is being applied to it, it will remain stand like this all through its life. But if I just put a finger or if I blow with uh, some wind, so it will change its position. So, from static it will just give a kinetic uh, start to that object and the third one it can change the motion of an object. Suppose it is moving towards this direction and if there is no obstruction it will move on, but the moment I uh, put my you know hand here, so it will stop the motion and it will force it to be in a static condition. So, force is that action which tends to do that and what about the moment? it related to the rotation of that object. So, it is again a force which will acting about a point with an arm or we call it lever. So, that will tends to rotate an object or bend an object. Say for uh, example, uh, I take this uh, exam uh, uh, you know model, this is you consider for this timing is a high rise building. So, it is fixed uh, to the ground with some foundation and this is open end. Now, when we put the pressure okay, and we put the pressure from one direction, so it will try to bend it as because it is anchored at the bottom. So, we will only see the bending as an option, but at the same time if something is like uh, having some pivot point to my hand and I put the force here and this is the lever acting, so it will give a rotation. So, all the propellers and other thing the wheel that is acting on the moment. So, in this slide uh, we come to know the force is the action which can either change the shape of the object, permanent deformation of the object or else it can move an object a static object to the kinetic one or it the reverse something is in motion. So, we can stop it with putting the force it is applied. So, say for example, when we are driving a car and all of a sudden we have to stop. So, we put the pressure or the force on the brake and it will uh, stop the car with desired distance and there are different formula how to do it, but basically we know this force and the moment if uh, it will try to bend an object that is why we are, I have shown this in this uh, example where like uh, this particular you know. Uh, wind direction can try to bend it and when it is like simultaneously shows that you know uh, like wind pressure is high here it will try to bend this side or during the seismic activity the plate will try to move and it will try to maintain its original inertia. So, like that it will be like uh, you know both ways swing and there will be a deformation. So, it may be a bending or else I put extra pressure on that. So, I will show with some picture there also we can see that okay, due to opposite direction force with a particular you know point and then a lever. So, it can bend and whenever we have a pivot point like this, so it can also give a rotation. Okay. So, with that let us uh, move forward. So, here I just randomly picked up some of the photographs and put it here to just uh, get the idea what is happening here. So, these are nothing uh, but uh, like stacking up the bricks for use. So, in construction side often you will see that how these being stacked up. Now, the thing is if, the, if this is the ground level, so if you consider the date load and we already know what is date load that is the self weight of that object or structural element. So, it is putting some pressure on the ground and when you put another one that will give additional pressure and like your force profile will look like this. So, when at the bottom it is a huge pressure and it is acting towards the center of the earth which we call 
gravity load right now the other picture here what we see this is just example of pulling a trolley back so in this case also we have to put some pressure to bring that you know this particular motion towards this direction and along with that it will have some pressure then the reaction and then basically uh, that vector analysis for the force how it will be distributed in the direction. But in this case uh, this is the load to make it stable if this is the ground it can bear the load if it is some table or so it has some capacity to hold it after that it will collapse. So, this is the gravity load. So, here the load is going towards the uh, like center of uh, our earth. In this case, it is basically uh, to change the position of that object. And in this case, this is sometimes in you know uh, like a small form of a roller coaster or uh, like in this case, a merry go round, sorry. In this case, uh, what we normally do, we just uh, use this particular point and this arm to create a torque and it will rotate. So, this is one example of the moment and these are two like the force, one force is the pulling force and this is the you know self weight the gravity force you know acting downwards. So, with this picture my intention is to uh, make it little bit easier to understand the force and the rotation. Now, this time it is your turn. Uh, what I wanted to show here, can you guess? Yeah, uh, it is basically uh, again a rotation. So, here you can see this is that paddle is acting as a lever and where uh, you have you know uh, this particular rotation being created and which is also carry forward with this particular chain and your cycle rotates. So, we put the pressure we give the moment to this particular gear and then it will and depending on different action now we have the motor how to start this. Uh, other one we have seen in that uh, it was the pulling force and here it is a pulling plus a push. So, pushing this object to change the position for the movement. So, this is again a force example and here if it is uh, you can see it uh, in a closer look. So, basically this is uh, the slab load testing process where you know number of sandbags being put one after another with desired level of load that this particular member can carry. So, it is again acting on this. So, earlier I have uh, shown you that the brick stacked up on the ground, but if we just put it on a table or a slab to test the bearing uh, capacity or maybe the desirable ultimate strength of this uh, structure made maybe concrete RCC or maybe some other steel member. So, whatever the load we put on this how like if there are any change or deformation the changing shape of this section. So, uh, like as per the definition here in this case uh, we have seen that one example how like this can change the shape and whenever you apply more load to that you know uh, the slab along with more sand back. So, definitely there will be some ultimate uh, or critical stress or strength level after that it will collapse. So, that will deform the object move an object push and pull we have seen the motion definitely we have seen that how uh, applying brake we can stop a moving vehicle or uh, we can start a motor to uh, you know make a static one to the uh, moving one and the for the moment it is basically again uh, if we just see here that if it is uniformly put some load. So, there will be moment. So, say for example, in a building you have cantilever ok. The moment you stand on a balcony or something like that it is try to bend in this direction. So, it is creating a moment and that is so true if you see the you know the swimmer they give a drive and the somersault from a height to the pond. So, then again you will see this particular moment. So, with that we move to uh, like force and that is action and reaction. So, we should remember two basic principles in this that force always act in pair. If there is action then uh, there will be reaction and uh, uh, along with that also 
you will see that uh, in this case like it will act in opposite direction. So, in this case uh, this particular hand is pressing on the wall. So, we put some action there will be reaction force from this. Now, depending on the material we use in case of uh, you know taking this brick if it is something like you know elastic material or sponge. So, when you put pressure if the spring are installed inside. So, it will give you a pressure back. So, you can feel it. Now, this is a you know bag of wire where you can pull the rope from two direction. So, whenever you take uh, the rope towards you. So, you there will be a reaction back to that and they are going in opposite uh, manner. So, as to that principle worked for the rocket. Okay, when we launch a rocket, so it put tremendous pressure, gas pressure to the ground and with that it will have uh, this particular upward force to go the rocket up. And that is so true with other aircrafts and other thing uh, that can go with that. Now, come to the static equilibrium uh, that we mentioned earlier that in order to get uh, a structure very much stable. So, we have to satisfy the static equilibrium conditions that in this picture before going to any other thing. So, what exactly it is? So, it is looking like a seesaw and uh, like this is the pivot point and they are almost equally placed. But here this is uh, uh, like bigger pebbles and here it is set of pebbles and they are making a balance. So, that means essentially if this length is L and this is L, if this is x the mass of this particular pebble is x. So, the summation of all this should be equal to x then only it will be stable otherwise definitely it will go to the higher mass. So, that we need to satisfy even in a building or any particular structure we make on that. And there are three basic conditions that always we need to check uh, to determine the static equilibrium of any structure that is net horizontal force must be equal to 0. Then net vertical forces must be equal to 0 and net moment should be 0. Now, what about the horizontal force? Like horizontal force is basically suppose you have a building and then there is some pressure okay, horizontal pressure to this and then along with that there will be reaction uh, from the structural element. So, they should balance each other. So, it may be in a linear form or may be the help with the truss or structural bracing. So, depending on the height and requirement the size scale we determine different structural component which will balance out this and the net result the horizontal force summation 0. The vertical one is the same when we take example of a table and uh, you know heavy mass on the table. So, it put pressure on the table okay, the p load is given to that and this table will give a reaction and that should be equal to p. So, one is, is giving pressure is p and uh, positive and the other one negative. So, whatever the positive negative that will balance out to be 0 and the moment is the same that is given here. So, the moment created in this side and this side is balancing each other. If you reduce a small small very you know uh, small portion of that very negligible portion you know, like delta x then also you will get uh, momentum here. So, it will pivot. So, then as a result what will happen if it is not in equilibrium? So, it will collapse or it will overturn. So, we have to be very much careful when we design the structure. So, in this case uh, these are the schematic taken from the book structure in architecture. So, in this case this is again uh, uh, you know pulling the rope to each other and uh, consider that both are giving the same amount of pressure uh, like force uh, in different direction. So, basically then if we take plus, plus minus then it will sum summarize to 0. So, whatever the point it will remain same. Now, you add another person to in this category and then obviously this particular point will shift towards this because then 
both will not be equal. This case is very interesting the earlier one where uh, that particular pivot point uh, was at the middle and we have equal length, but here it is not equal length when still it is stable because of like when we calculate the moment it is basically the mass into the distance. So, in this case it should be equal to m 1 l 1 equal to m 2 l 2. So, this is uh, we just call uh, m 1 and this is m 2. So, in this case if you see that it is being given like 40 uh, is maybe 40 kg uh, like 50 uh, pressure is being given and here 200, but 200 into 2 is the length. So, 400 here also 400. So, even if it is not equally placed still it considered to be stable. So, structural equilibrium is maintained. So, as true with the body mashing when it is a weight lifting equal weight. So, reaction force should be equal then only one can hold it. If it is beyond that limit the capacity, so one cannot uh, weight lifter cannot hold it. Now, come to the you know type of uh, load or force we can say in this case uh, like that load also can be referred as a force. So, it may be compression, it may be tension, it may be shear, it may be bending, it may be torsion. So, grossly we can divide it into 5 category and all will have an indication. So, if something you know compressive force being applied, so object will be shortened. If tension, so it will elongate. If it is shear, it will slide to each other and if it is bending then it is elongate, it may get bent and also uh, shorten the other side. So, it due to bending one side will have compression the other will have tension. So, both will happen in terms of bending and torsion is basically the twist. So, with this uh, very schematic uh, we can see that how it is going to happen. So, when you just put pressure from both the end it will give you compression, when you just pull from both the end then it will give you tension, when you, you give lateral force in opposite direction. So, uh, maybe wind load and one will uh, give the load to make it at the initial position then it will be bending and then we give the moment in the direction then uh, it will be the torsion and the shear is basically the force acting in opposite direction. So, uh, before we really go into detail let us understand with uh, this particular example. So, in this case uh, this is the bar and if I just put it there and I put the pressure. So, you can uh, do this exercise and here it actually got broken because of multiple reasons. So, what happened exactly I have another one to show you. So, when I put the pressure, so it has some strain. So, first of all it will try to compress and then as because uh, both my finger are not really giving the actual pressure in the same manner. So, it will get different way and that is why something bending happened and after that uh, like as because like my finger this tends to towards my direction and this is towards your direction. So, it also create the shear and it collapsed. So, collapsing uh, building may occur due to many reasons and uh, the other example that is the tension that if I want to pull it as because this material is not strong enough or not elastic enough to show that, but I have other uh, you know tool to use it. So, basically uh, I have this weight and this is a elastic material and you can see that uh, okay, two uh, yellow color uh, steep is given. So, this is the distance and when you just float it you can observe that there is some elongation. So, elongation and the distance between these two flag uh, applying load and uh, like applying uh, releasing load and then you know when you apply load like this and when you release load like this. So, this is changing. So, this is one kind of tension that uh, we can face of this and for the twisting again it is the rotation. So, I have a strip of cardboard and if I just want to twist in 
this direction, the opposite direction. So, then you can see that how it will look like. So, for high rise building it is uh, really a challenge when different kind of you know wind load will come into picture. So, uh, that uh, dynamic to be followed up. Now, the compression I have uh, some schematic and uh, by intention I put it to just give you some information to you that compression this is uh, the cycle uh, pump. So, manually you have to pump it. So, what exactly it does it uh, like whatever the air it compressed and then you can feel the pressure that when you just uh, give this thing and this is the table where pile of books are being placed. So, load is being transferred. So, it is giving pressure. So, so that uh, there will be you know uh, like if we consider a material. So, the particles each particles due to compression they will come to close each other. So, this is something we can say the compression. This is for the load again it will uh, give some pressure on that the compression is being uh, put on that. Now, here it is the tension already I have mentioned with the spring. So, uh, with this material uh, even it is steel. So, there will be some deformation after certain you know yield strays will come to that also this is the crane and here basically all these cables they are putting in tension and these are the compression. So, they are balancing each other to maintain the equilibrium. The shear uh, already I have shown with the thermocol the way it got broken. So, this is the same thing and that to be uh, honest also like when you tear a paper. So, that we put pressure in the uh, different direction and then it got the result. So, here two pictures that you can see this is again a failure of column due to shear. So, it is uh, moving this direction, this direction and uh, it also depends on the rigidity or steepness of the property will come into um, the later stage to discuss it. The bending again uh, it is very clear and this is a you know laboratory test where load being applied on a wooden beam and you can see the deformation and uh, cracks developed here. Now, uh, in this case again um, let us understand this when this is the bar and we put pressure from that. So, it will have a sag. So, sagging moment being created, but interesting fact is that. So, at the top portion of that ok. So, it is shortened. So, at bending said that one end elongate and one end shortened. So, this is the shortened. So, compression takes place here the upper end is got elongated. So, in this case it is the bottom one is in tension. So, compression and tension. So, this is very useful information we will again come back to this for designing the reinforcement for the premium column and this is uh, again a real uh, photograph where like excessive bending you can observe the deformation. So, this part is basically tension and this is the compression. Now, the torsion the very good example uh, that in daily basis when we just uh, squeeze or twist our towel to you know uh, remove the water into it uh, during washing our cloth or towel. So, this is basically the torsion we giving pressure in the opposite direction and it will give the twisting form. Applying this though this building is very stable giving this twisting form to just have this. So, this is again uh, very much important especially for the um, high rise building where the lateral load will play a crucial uh, fact. So, in quick recap what we have understood one is your compression when we place it. So, that is basically you know uh, the particles they come closer to each other and then we got the tension where we just pull it and the particles they go away from each other. Then we have bending. So, in bending what happens? So, ap applying load this was original position. So, this portion shortened. So, it, it is compression like this and the bottom part it tension it is there and the shear is basically the force applied on uh, you know excessive force applied to it uh, in opposite direction the lateral force. So, it will develop a slide. So, it may move this side this may move side for uh, normal beam to the high rise this is another problem we have to uh, really take into consideration and the other one that we have seen that is the torsion. So, when we twist a building uh, like this 
okay. So, uh, give a motion to that with the example. So, these are overall uh, you know property of the structure that we are, need to understand. Now, come to the stress. In this case, stress is normally defined as the force uh, per unit area and when that is being created by compression, it is called compressive for, uh, stress. When it is due to tension, it is tensile stress. When it is due to shear, it is shear stress. So, in this case, it is tensile here it is putting pressure on that compressive and here it is basically shear. So, compression, tension and shear we repeatedly will be using these terms in our upcoming lectures to know the different structural property. Now, the strain is uh, like you can see through the GIF image what is happening here and also the same thing like with this particular model. So, like in this case it is as because I, I have used a, a rubber, so it is giving you some motion up and down and you can see the distance between this when uh, we do not apply any force. So, it is short and now get elongated. So, there is some deformation. So, that deformation is basically if it is L and the deformation is delta L. So, this is basically the strain and along with that the unit, unit strain uh, is calculated by your change in length by L. So, this is very important and uh, it act okay, depending on that you have some ultimate uh, you know strain and stress and when you compare when we develop the relationship between stress and strain we get uh, elastic modulus. So, in this case what exactly it is? It is very simple this is basically stress by strain of the material. So, for this you can uh, calculate it. And uh, this is also known as the Young modulus uh, like developed by Young. So, uh, that is why also like we can select the material which can have the higher modulus or something which will depending on the load applied the deformation and all. Now, the other one is uh, related to the you know poison ratio. So, it is the ratio between lateral strain by axial strain. So, if we just take a you know elastic material or something. So, here you can see that earlier shape was like this a square one and when you take it. So, there will be deformation, there will be increase in length, but as well as there will be you know decrease in the uh, thickness. So, in this case you can see that a cylinder when it pulled off. So, what is happening? The length is increasing, but the radius it is getting deformed. You can practice with some you know having thickness some tube. So, you can just try to pull it. So, you can see. So, that particular lateral strain. So, lateral strain means the deformation. So, earlier whatever the size and then uh, you have delta L by say uh, L and then the this distance may be this is L 1. So, this is again you get the increase the change in the you know longitudinal strain or axial strain and get it the ratio. So, it is also uh, important to know this aspect of the structural property. Now, come to the thermal load. So, apart from that also due to the excessive you know heat again either from some friction or through sunlight. So, there will be expansion. So, uh, depending on that uh, there will be thermal expansion. So, for that reason also from our childhood we used to know that why this gap being created. So, this expansion gap is being created in the railway track as well as in a building where the thermal you know for a huge building where the material is really uh, you know um, the material used can get affected with the excessive heat, it can change in cold climate or something. So, as true with the you know the tower uh, electrical tower where you know in winter we have almost uh, this kind of arrangement, but during uh, the summer days uh, during cold time it is being little bit tight when it is in summer. So, it expands. So, we get a sagging to this. So, we have to encounter this, we cannot take this length as universal. So, that like it will have developed some strain sometimes you know it will be uh, developing tension. So, it may collapse. So, thermal load is another important thing and along with that everything 
should satisfy the four A's of the structure that we already discussed that is your strength, stiffness, stability and synergy where strength will prevent your structure from breaking, stiffness will prevent it from the deformation. Then uh, the stability deformation means it may be the horizontal or the buckling. Buckling is basically when you have this vertical structure and put the load and this particular bending. And then the synergy is the overall arrangement or riveting in order to give the final outcome. So, in this what we have learned, so we started with the force, then we uh, know this action uh, react versus reaction and you know uh, in this also we have uh, studied that force always act in pair and in opposite direction. Then we come to moment and different kind of result of momentum and then along with that we also uh, study the compression, then tension, then your bending, then shear and then you have the uh, torsion. Okay. And along with that we also study the stress, the you know stress uh, and then strain and their different relationship with the young modulus and then you also know the Poisson's ratio for the lateral strain and the axial strain. Then uh, along with that also uh, we know the thermal uh, you know thermal load and then basically we got some basic property of the structure by which we will uh, be able to select the right material for right resistance so that overall your building will be stable, uh, it will have the enough steepness, enough stability for the arrangement and overall synergy between them to uh, uh, your building more uh, you know safe uh, in from any other you know uh, externalities, any other applied force and it will be a, you know a proper resistance to all these external forces. So, with that uh, I conclude here, here I have uh, included some uh, books where you can find it is the basic books of structural mechanics. Normally in uh, you know engineering we used to study it. So, you can go through it and uh, the next uh, what we will discuss is basically the structural requirement. And again uh, with that I thank you all for attending this course and hopefully I have really covered something and then we will move forward to the requirement of structure. Thank you. Thank you.